Hello, friends. This is our second week of our journey together in discovering the kind of balance and contentment, serenity, and joy that we might find in, in practicing Taoist thought. It was such a pleasure to meet with you last Saturday to be able to put a uh, face to the names and to see, <clears throat> to see everyone in a context of discovering our own authentic, authentic selves. Um, interesting, when we are learning to live from down in our deepest, most true nature, instead of the personas and personalities and masks that we've learned to adopt. Even the use of, of technology can be connective. As I, as I listened to you and saw your faces, it wasn't that disembodied sort of a feeling. It was a connective sort of a feeling. And it was because all of us were taking this journey down into our authentic true nature, the TE, the duh, of Dao Te Ching. Anyway, it was a pleasure. This week, I'd like us to look a little bit at the idea of living in the present moment. There's an old Zen saying, a story about there being only two questions that need to be answered in order to have a completely fulfilled, happy, peaceful, and contented life. And there's only one right answer to each question. There's no shades of meaning. There's no uh, waffling. There's no possibility of evading the actual meaning of the answer of the questions. There's a right answer to each one. And these two questions are, where are you? And what time is it? And of course, the only correct answer to the first one is here. And the only correct answer to the second one is now. Where are you? Here. What time is it? Now. Now you've probably heard that, that little story before. And there's a sense in which it's um, kind of a trope. It, it, it's a self-evident saying, well, of course it's here and now. But that idea of living in the here and now and in the present moment needs to be taken away from the too easy, facile, kind of new age commentary of be here now, because it's a profound exploration. That idea of living in the present moment of being actually here and now is a journey of, of exploration into what is actually enlightenment that being here and now is is it it's, it's the whole thing what is what makes it so difficult to live in the here and the now i've got a my phone sitting over here and it's annoying me so well, one of the difficulties that I discover is, of course, the conditioned mind. That part of me that knows better than the deeper part of me, that really wants to take over any exploration I have and bring it up into the, into the area of mental concepts and structures and cultural norms. And say, says to me, yes, live in the here and the now. That's, yes, you should do that. Here, let me help you. Are you living in the here and the now? Come to the here and the now. I don't think you're living in the here and the now. You're not doing a very good job of living in the here and the now. You're thinking way too much. You need to come back and compete. Yada, 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 yada. So the idea of living in the present moment gets taken away from the natural quality <clears throat> of our deepest Tao mind and brought up into the area of conditioned thinking and becomes not the present moment. It becomes thoughts about the present moment or the concept of living in the present moment. Whereas the present moment, the true here and now is not a concept. It's a present moment 
experience. It's just here, just now. In a sense, there's no other moment possible. I mean, in reality, there isn't anything else. There is just the here and the now. So what's, what's the problem? We're always living in the here and the now. Well, the problem, of course, is the conditioned mind. The brain, by its very nature, creates a past and a future. The ability of the brain to make connections and some, in some mysterious way store those connections in a neural network is, as many philosophers and cosmologists assert, the very creation of, of the experience of time. Without the, <clears throat> without the brain's ability to create past and future, there would be only an experience of the present moment and the concept of time wouldn't exist. So it's natural that I have um, a brain that tends to take me away from the natural flow of experience. So one part of my nature is in a sense at odds with another part of my nature. And my journey is to bring those two parts of my nature, the way my brain works and the way my deeper authentic self works into balance with each other. So that the brain's ability to create past and future plans and worries and regrets and hopes and dreams and fears uh, can be assimilated into a deeper, more spacious kind of existence of the here and the now that makes that ability of the brain cease to be a problem. There's a, one of my favorite chapters in the Tao Te Ching, that it's chapter 63, and it contains the line that in one of my translation, one of my translations, I translate as the only step necessary <clears throat> in the journey of a thousand miles is the next one. Other translations sometimes translate that line as the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. That step that's right in front of us in the present moment is the only step possible on our journey. So our journey into a, a deepening sense of authenticity and peace and contentment begins with this moment and then this moment and then this moment so that peace and happiness is not some goal in the future but is something i step into in this very present moment i am here i am now one of my favorite teachers the vietnamese buddhist monk Thich Nhat han speaks of present moment wonderful moment Breathing in, I am here. Breathing out, I am here. Breathing in, present moment. Breathing out, wonderful moment. Much of his Zen teaching is about the ability to take steps one at a time in the present moment. Now, one of the things in my experience that clouds my ability to live in this present moment, wonderful moment, is merely my conditioned thinking. You've all heard the trope, think outside the box. You know, think outside the box as a, as a step into creativity. <clears throat> that brings me in, in mind of the wonderful bumper sticker I saw many years ago that said, maybe thinking is the box. What would it be like 
to be outside of thinking. Have you ever wanted to just stop thinking? Most of what the brain does, 90% of what the marvelous organ that we call the brain does is outside of the realm of conscious thinking. It keeps this form going in thousands of intricate, interconnected processes of blood flow and nerves and cells and healing and growing and changing all unconsciously, all activities of the brain that aren't thinking. Thinking is not the primary activity of the brain. Thinking may very well be the problem. The founder of the San Francisco Zen Center, Sunru Suzuki, wrote a wonderful little book called Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. In that book, he talked about first thoughts and second thoughts. First thoughts, he said, are those activities of the brain that arise in the present moment, in the here and now. They just appear. There they are. Second thoughts are thoughts about the first thoughts. And then thoughts about those thoughts, about the first thoughts. And down the rabbit hole we go in what is called discursive thinking. I have a present moment experience, and I have thoughts that arise in that, thoughts of beauty, thoughts of fear, thoughts of excitement, thoughts of pleasure. And then I have thoughts about those thoughts, and away I go. Isn't it beautiful? Gosh, it should be this beautiful all the time. I had another beautiful experience once. Oh, I wish so-and-so was here to share this beautiful experience with me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, if it could only last. So first thoughts are our natural process of Tao mind. Second thoughts are a product of conditioned mind. Now there is, I'll admit, a place for discursive thinking, but it's a much smaller place than we would like to admit. And true, helpful, authentic, discursive thinking is simply a chain of first thoughts, of thoughts that arise and then arise and then arise and take us in a direct step-by-step-by-step -step -step experience of our lives rather than thoughts about thoughts and thoughts that take us off into discursive thinking, which is usually a product of fear or desire of hope or anticipation. Now I do plan. I sort of planned this talk this morning, but I don't let my plans interfere with what's actually happening. Plans are fine in their place as long as they don't interfere with what is actually happening in the here and in the now. So, if I ramble sometimes in, in my speak, speaking, I've learned to live with that. I don't have the need for the tight, controlled expressions of a plan that I used to have. That didn't serve me. It doesn't serve any of us. It tightens our life around a constructed expectation of what should exist. Instead of opening us into the experience of what actually exists and the part that we might play in that actual experience of what is. So I do act, I do take steps. I take steps one at a time in the present moment when I'm living in the present moment, which I will admit is not all the time. So as I even, as I, as, as I speak, I'm hearing a background chatter of, have you covered all the things that you wanted to cover? 
you better look down at your notes and make sure that you're you're covering all the things that you wanted to cover. That's okay. But do you get the sense of how that takes me out of this experience of talking with you in this moment and letting all the cues of my Tao mind, of my spaciousness, of my true nature inform what I do next? rather than having my ideas of what I should be saying and my ideas of what I think you might want to hear inform what I do. It's a delicate balance. That ability to live in the present moment is delicate. And it, in the, the idea of new age be here and now, it gets, it gets trivialized, I'm afraid. Let me go back to my original point. It is perhaps one of the most important practices that we can develop over our lifetimes. That practice of being truly in the present moment. Because it's only in the present moment that happiness exists. We've fallen for the illusion that happiness exists in some future moment, or it existed in some past moment back when things were the way they were supposed to be. It does not. God does not exist anywhere except in the present moment. God is not a future. God is not a past. It is the present. Happiness, contentment, true life only exists here and now. Don't fall for the cultural conditioned mindset that all of these qualities that we want in life are something that we have to create and arrange and erect in our actions so that at some time in the future, we may actually be happy. That contentment awaits me. It never awaits. It always waits here, now in who I authentically am. And who I authentically am exists only in the present moment, only in the spaciousness of the Wu Chi, the Tao, this moment. One of my Zen teachers long ago said to me, Bill, let me tell you a secret. It's the focus of your attention that determines the quality of your life. Your attention is like a spotlight that you have the ability to direct anywhere. As long as you direct it onto the screen of the thoughts of your mind, you will have a quality of mind of life that's determined by your conditioned mind. If you can learn to direct the spotlight of your attention on the spaciousness of Wu Chi awareness, the quality of your life will be spacious, will be aware, will be content. So that ability to spotlight, to turn my attention to the spaciousness that exists in the present moment determines the quality of my life. So as we, as we take that journey into contentment, joy, peace, harmony, balance, it's the focus of our attention that, that will guide us. Well, it's been pleasant talking with you. I really look forward to seeing you again this Saturday. I hope your week is filled with present moment joy. See you Saturday.